Hello dear friends, welcome to Shiksha Mantra. Today we have a very special discussion here to follow. Actually, most of the time what happens, our students, they learn a lot. They learn a lot about the theory, about the rules of some grammar chapters. But what happens when you are put into some questions, when you have been asked to solve some grammatical problem, what you do? You make very silly mistakes. Those mistakes weren't uh, actually uh, very much acceptable. That's why you lose a lot of marks in your exam. And uh, why to consider the exams only? Whenever you do something, you lose a lot of things there. But the problem is you mustn't do it when you have already learned the rules well. Actually, as a teacher, what I feel English grammar is but a set of tricks. You have to learn some tricks. And do you know a torchlight? Yes, dear friends. A torchlight is what you need. You need for what? You need to do something to do well in your English grammar paper. Why? What does a torchlight do? It illuminates, but only those things on which you put it, you focus it. So when you are in some grammatical problem, you have some problems, you have some points to focus on. And today, in this session, we are going to discuss a topic which is really very, very important for us in your learning of English grammar. And we are going to discuss it in detail. Yes, dear friends, here it is. Direct and indirect speech. Yes, dear friends, it's direct and indirect speech. Now, why I have chosen this direct and indirect speech? Here it has been written very clearly. There we would supply some keys to transform them easily and effectively. Yes, dear friends, that's the point. Would provide some keys to transform those sentences very easily as well as effectively. And as it is said, listen to this discussion very carefully. Learn those points first and then try to transform direct speeches into indirect and I can assure you, you won't make any mistake. So are you ready to learn those tricks? Yes, dear friends, let's begin our discussion now. So, we would begin our discussion with some points. The points are things to remember while transforming. So, what will you remember while transforming direct speech into indirect speech? The discussion is going to get a bit longer because we discuss in detail and I think uh, that detailed discussion would be of much help to you. So, the first thing that we'd consider, reporting speech and reported speech, you have already learned it. You have also learned reporting verb and reported verbs. You have learned the rules for changing the tenses. But according to me, the first thing that you must learn, you must put into focus, you must put the torch on and what are they number one it's it's very important the first point is time yes dear friends first you have to get conscious about time 
second you have to get conscious about place third you have to get conscious about portion and the fourth you have to get conscious about speech so these are the four points that you have to get conscious of it's better to put time here as well later you'd understand why i have put place and time and time separately you'd learn it so the first point that we'd have to consider time that's the tense now it ask me so tense what tense where tense it's very simple you have learned it in the rules that's why i have told you these are but tricks when you learn these tricks you would get support from your learning of the rules and the rules would be applied properly while you are transforming the sentence we we'll transform the sentence following these four focus points but first learn them so here the first thing that you have to consider it's about tense tense for what tense for both reporting and reported verb as you know the reporting verb with its tense will detect the tense of the reported verb with that with the tense uh, the reported verb is so there would be a balance a balance in between the reporting verb and the reported verb so first you have to detect the reporting verb and the reported verb and then you have to find out their tense so this is a very very important part for our transformation of direct speech into indirect or vice versa the second point is place and time why place and time it's because the adverbs that's there in your sentences yes dear friends as you know you have to change the adverbs in your transformation of direct into indirect so adverbs are the most important points that we have to put focus on now why adverbs why haven't i told about the types of sentences or the person etc etc why adverb as you know there's three different types of narrations first person narration second person narration or third person narration and how to find out that narration it would depend on time and place when and where it is reported it is told so the next focus point will be the adverbs and at the same times you have to consider where to put the adverbs that's also very very important and the third point that we would consider it's about person person means first person second person and third person with their subject object or possessive and also their number and also their gender if you get the scope to judge it so what are the points that we would uh, discuss about we think about while transforming direct speech into indirect speech person it's very very important as you know according to the person of the reporting speech the person of the reported speech gets changed so your next focus point would be the person and the third point is person with subject object or possessive so as you know a personal pronoun may occur either as the subject of a sentence verb or object of a verb as well as it, it can be used possessively so wherever these pronouns you have to consider them you have to consider their changes and uh, obviously number and gender it's also very very important to consider about so that's our third focus point and then 
we have our fourth focus focus point and that's the speech which speech obviously we are talking of reported speech yes dear friends reporting speech is not our consideration because it would always be in uh, it it's always declarative it's always narrative assertive sentence that's not our uh, focus point but our focus point is to find out whether the reported speech is in assertive or interrogative or exclamatory or optative what is it or there's a question tag what's there in the speech what's there in the reported speech that means the types of sentence that is what we have to consider type of sentence because as you have already learned that uh, the different types of sentences use different types of different sets of rules so detecting the types of sentences in reported speech is equally important so finally what we get finally we get four focal points yes just remember them as what as north south east west as we have four sides four directions so is the uh, tricks that we have to apply in our direct and indirect speech the first is time that's tense the second is place and time that means the adverbs the third is person that's the change of pronouns and the fourth is speech that's the types of sentences that the reported speech is in now if you consider these four focal points if you put these four points in focus while transforming direct speech into indirect speech what will happen let us see what happens when we do this so here we have a sentence just have a look at the sentence the boy said to me you are now my friend yes dear friends so we have to consider here point after point the first is we have to consider the verbs when we have considered the reporting verb it's in simple past tense and when we have considered the reported verb it's in simple present tense so time or the tense of both the reported speech and reporting speech has been detected just to do it like this at the beginning you have to practice these just as i'm doing here you have to write them down you have to mark them and then solve them so you would not make any mistake there the second point that you have to consider time and place so here we have now so this is an adverb so we have to remember that we have to change the adverb it's better if i change the colors the third point is pronouns so we have two pronouns here you and my so two pronouns are here for us to change one is in the subject position and the other is in the possessive pronoun form so we have considered three different focal points and now it's our fourth focal point and the fourth point is the types of sentence that the reported speech belong to and here easily you can find out that the reported speech belongs to assertive sentence it's assertive now we'll just use these rules we we'll just use these focal points to change it the first is the boy said to me so what would write would write the boy told me now would omit comma and quotation as it is assertive sentence we know the linker will be that so there's no problem we have found out we have 
a very clean and clear access to the rules that we have learned. If it's assertive sentence, use that. So we have done it. Now the point is, after it would uh, have focus on now, it helps us in detecting the tense and at the same time, it also helps us to remember one thing that there is a change in time. Why? Because it is not present. Here it was simple present but there it is simple past. So there would be a change but before that change we have to focus on the pronoun. You. Who is you here? You is me. That means it is in second person but we have to transform it into first person. So what happens? Now, the subject you in second person would be transformed into first person that I. Then comes what? Change of tense. So R, it would be was. Then another change. My friend, then you are now my friend. So it's better to put the adverb aside now. Let's uh, find out what's about this possessive pronoun, mine. So mine, the identity of this pronoun is the boy. So it would be transformed into third person from first person. From first person, it would be transformed into third person. And at the same time, the boy, it's singular and it's masculine so number and gender we have considered both of them it's singular and it's masculine so for my would use his as uh, the friend is there would use friend and we have dropped this uh, adverb now, so it would be transformed into then. So the boy told me that I was his friend then. So if you consider very easily and very effectively, we have transformed the direct speech into indirect by only focusing on these four points. And what are the four points here? Just remember, I'm repeating it for you. So what are the four points or the four focal points that we'd have to remember? The first of them is obviously what the first of them is tense. You have to remember what tense is used both in reporting as well as in reported speech both in reporting and in reported it's not only about reporting or only about reported it's for both the second point is pronoun that has been used both in reporting as well as in reported speech third point types of sentence used types of sentence and this time we have to consider it for reported speech only types of sentence and the fourth point is adverbs used because you have to change the adverbs as well so if you use these four focal points if you keep these four points in focus while transforming direct speech into indirect speech i can assure you that you won't make any mistake and it's sure so i think uh, that's uh, quite sufficient for you to remember these four points if you want you may have a note of them as well and the point what I want to clear for you that you have to remember 
I may provide some tips and tricks here, but it's up to you to remember the tips and tricks supported by the proper rules you have learned from a good grammar book and together they would help you to crack your grammatical problems well and that's all for the discussion from today. We are returning very soon with another fresh discussion here in Shiksha Mantra. Till then, bye-bye. Happy learning.